Lohaini. Welcome, Lohaini. Not yet. So, welcome to Pesk. Carry on this cold night. Tonight we're going to have G talking about transforming adversities into blessings. Amen. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and as usual, I've already explained to you as we work, but just a quick go through. We start at 7, finish around 7 30, 40 ish. After that, we have a prayer box. So, you can have it. Go through. We then will go up to the left, just put the key to wish in there so we can have a prayer. By the end of the meeting, we will uh, conduct that prayer for us. After that, we're gonna have the Holy Passes that is just behind here. Usually we have a free um, curtain. I have to confess that. Uh, but yeah, Holy Passes over there. Usually so, and also task is very interactive, so you can. Raise your hand, make questions, we discuss as we, as we are uh, talking at the front, uh, near the front door. It's about for us to just get involved and have all the questions and, and the excitement about learning, not about us being here and lecturing you guys about what is right, what is wrong. We are just here to learn and share. Um, and usually the person here is just about the one that go that facilitating. Extra, yeah, to prepare some to wow. facilitate. <laughs> But she's 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 our guru. Do you know no. guru? The word guru. Right. Um, she's our guru. No. no. <laughs> she always conducts the meditation for us. So this is our uh, kindly way of calling her as our guru. <laughs> so yeah. So I uh, just would like to invite you guys so we can have a little prayer, just to prepare yourselves, our spirits, our hearts to be open, to receive, to be open, to give, to welcome all the friends in the material and the spiritual world that gather here tonight to share our love, to share our hopes, to share our doubts, our questions, so we can all learn together. We would like to leave behind things that are not necessary at this moment and be present here. Be present to listen and to learn. Be present to receive whatever we have to receive from God. And be grateful for the opportunity. Just take a deep breath in. Acknowledge who you are. Feel the surround around you. Feel the presence of our guide, spirit. Feel the presence of our friends. Just let this energy flow through you. Thank you, Dai. Thank you, and welcome everyone and um, people from home, people that are going to be listening and watching this later on. Um, we today we are going to talk about adversities. I think I have to do something there. Hello? Uh, I can't get my mouse there, though. Not like, ah, all right. Recording in progress. Okay. So we're talking about adversities and about, as I said, we do um, interaction 
not really a, a traditional lecture we can interact so you guys can invite to um, input anytime and have questions as well at any time and just stop me but so we're going to be doing this discussion about uh, adversities and how or what about transforming what's the transformation that can happen um, uh, when adversities when we face adversities in life so uh, as usual as I like usually to start, let's see, okay. but always with a definition, whatever we are talking about. So we always go like uh, to um, um, dictionary and, so, and, and look what is the definition, what is the concept, because everything is a concept that we humans um, create. So what is adversity? What is a common sense about adversity and adversity is a state of, of hardship difficulty or misfortune that one deals with in life so that's a definition now so when we talk about when we think about adverse we think okay hardship difficulty misfortune no that is present in our life someone's life so i picked this uh, picture here now like like if we um, need to take this ball, it's very challenging because it usually is a challenge and the challenge that we usually didn't choose. Huh? When you think of adversity, like I didn't, I don't choose an adversity. Usually it's I have, I'm going on my way and then some, some, suddenly something happened that I didn't choose and it's a challenge. So I need, like I need to push this ball up hill um, and it's very heavy, uh, and there is a grand chance that this ball is gonna rock, um, roll back uh, over me, right? And that's what happened. And that's when I have, okay, adversity, that's me. Hardship, difficulty, and misfortune. Also, when we talk about that, when we search about adversity, uh, in terms of synonymes, uh, we find a lot of words, it's very small, so I'm going to try to read something small to me too here. Some words that are synonyms of adversity. Again, as I said, misfortune, um, bad luck, trouble, difficult, hardship, distress, uh, disaster misadventure, suffering, affliction, sorrow, and misery, and so on. Let's see if there's something, accident, shock, upset, um, trauma, pain, torment, torture, right? So all those words that I, I read as a cinema are negative. I mean, have the, this negative connotation is, and, the, and also, um, the connotation of suffering. Yeah? So every, all those words really bring us like uh, this sense of suffering. So that's what we link adversity to. Um, it comes hand on hand with suffering in, of some sort. Uh, and, that's, uh, and that's what we are taught. That's why we, we grew, that's why we find this in the dictionary because that's how we grew up. There's a adversity equals suffering, right? Um, but is that really true? Is that really true? Is that adversity equals suffering? We could spend another lecture talking about suffering and, and actually suffering was one of the topics that were, um, um, were um, recommended to talk in this, letter, in this lecture, but um, we would need another lecture to talk about suffering. So we are not going to be talking about suffering or how to suffer, you know, facing adversity here. I'm going to fo focus this lecture on adversity perception. Okay, so we can have two things. One, how we perceive adversity, and we could also talk how we suffer well facing adversity. For that... <laughs> <laughs> so if you approach 
when you're eating chocolate, you're probably not suffering, suffering pain. When, uh, come when you are not eating chocolate anymore. <laughs> but I recommend, um, I, I just started, I want to read this book. This book is from the, the monk, this monk, Buddhist monk, Thich, Thich Nhat Ham. And he, he is a late monk, like late person. He passed last year, if I'm not mistaken, at 90 something. Um, and he wrote many books, and this is one of his books. It's uh, The Art of Transforming Suffering. And, and in this book, um, he approaches the suffering and happiness, and he says that actually suffering and happiness come hand to hand. And you, you would never have a suffering if you didn't have happiness, and have happiness if you didn't have suffering. It's like having the right and left. You cannot remove one. If you remove one, you don't have the other one. So he approaches this way, you know, so we need actually to um, uh, see the suffering as part of our life and then find the happiness where, where it is. So it's a beautiful topic and I, maybe next year we can plan a lecture on that. But we are going to talk, as I said, about adversity perception. So I want to discuss how do you perceive adversity. As I said, in the dictionary, it comes very, you know, so in the suffering connotation, in the difficult hardship and all these things. So we are already prepared for oh, adversity. Oh, no, no, I don't want adversity in my life. Anyone here wants adversity in your life based on what I just showed? No one, because no one wants suffering. He thinks we need suffering, but that's another lecture, as I said. But continuing here, then. Oh, oh gosh, I, I spoiled it. I totally spoiled it. So if we look just the face of this beautiful girl, we'll say, I mean, I spoiled anyway, but I'll say there is no, um, I don't see a diversity. I see a happy person there, right? And then we move here and then, oh, we may, we may change or may not change our minds. And um, but for me personally, if I see that spot, I say, well, if I was in that position now, if that happened to me tomorrow, that would be a big adversity in my life. It may not be in her, so I don't know. Uh, she's actually an athlete and, you know, a, a champion in, in her sport. But I... And I think pretty much she doesn't, she probably doesn't see much of the adversity. It still has because when we, when we, we see like, um, I could bring many different examples of adversity is not only physical, um, uh, I hate this word, but I'm going to use here disability, but um, it's, it could be anything in life, right? Any type of adversity. But um, the thing is that, the people, the disabled people are not actually, is, they are nothing less. They are not disabled. The system that we live is disabled. It's not um, prepared, it's not, um, um, they fit to them, right? So that's why the adversities come because actually, you know, the way the, the majority of people have legs and arms and, and walk. And so everything is built for us. So then when a person is different becomes an adversity because you know there are some difficulties because the system is not right is not prepared it's not right for that but then even though even though people don't don't see it as a first if i again i was in that position i probably would so i have another one here hope not spoil this one <laughs> and again any adversity in this vibe doesn't no? doesn't pass an adverse so I just want you to meet nick and i hope i can say this name nick vujicic 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 vujic uh he is australian from melbourne he's 39 years old he completed high school here in Rancorn and graduated at uh, Griffith University at age of 21. He he's the founder of the nonprofit organization Life Without Limbs. And, uh, and he's a motivational speaker and he has a company uh, called uh, Attitude is Altitude. He's married and he has 
three or four kids. Huh? Yeah. So again, uh, yeah, you want to see one. So a diversity cannot be generalized, as I said. Right? Uh, um, it may present to us in a different in a variety of spectrums and nuances, and, and it can be felt in a different way. Um, so we cannot compare, never compare a diversity from one person and challenging in life from one person to other person. Um, for example, if, if he was born without limbs, um, his challenge is totally different than a person that would then just uh, lose their limbs well overnight. Over, yeah? So it's different, but doesn't mean that he didn't have, because again, our system and a society and the way we, we, we live, it, it's not prepared for a, a person a, to live without limbs. It's very difficult, right? So this person is a person that, you know, faces a diverse in, the, in, in his daily life. Okay, so now I would like, I invite us to watch a short talk from Nick. Um, not to trace lines for comparison about overcoming adversity, but to start our discussion tonight with positivity and motivated to reflect on how adversity can be the instrument to transform our lives. Uh, so let's just see what he talked, uh, how, what he says about his life and his challenges. Okay. Can I just leave it with this? It's not gonna work? Oh, it does not work. Sorry. Okay, we have to go back in. I should have told you. Can we go to the beginning? Can we go that work? It's not going. Oh, that's a pity. Oh, we're gonna miss that then. If no, I mean the sound will sound is not so even no sound cannot change even here to get the sound from here. Is there no one online? Mm -hmm. Yep. No. But a pity. Like uh, the YouTube here? All right, so I'm going to try to synchronize this. <clears throat> Let's move this to beginning. How do I do? Go to beginning. It's hard. They go there and move there.
Voilà. C'est... Probably not going to be synchronized in there. Wait, one, two, three, go. That's okay, that's okay. Is there a, a little music in the beginning anyway? <laughs> okay. sometimes in life there are things that happen that you don't know and you don't understand and you don't know if you're going to get through it you know you go through your storms in life and you don't know how long the storm's going to be and today i want to share with you some principles that i've learned in my life that you can use being patient beautiful heart. i tell you it's the hardest thing I realize I may not have hands to hold my wife's hand, but when the time comes, I'll be able to hold her heart. I don't need hands to hold her heart. You know, it is scary to know how many girls have eating disorders. It is scary to know how many people are just angry at life because of their situation at home and angry at others. It's scary to know how many people actually feel like they're worth nothing. Every single girl right here, right now, I want you to know that you are You are gorgeous just the way you are. You boys, you're the man. Honestly. So, it is very powerful to hear that, you know, I don't need hands to hold someone's heart. Uh, so it's um, a person that realized that in his adversity. And um, as I said, although we, we should never ge generalize, like, you no, know, it's not because a person like him could overcome his adversity that uh, we expect everyone to, to be the same and, and, and all follow the same path. But uh, as I said, um, it's a matter for me in this, in this lecture, is a matter for us to see adversities in a slightly different way or a totally different way. Then we see according to the dictionary that tells us this hardship is suffering, is pain, is torture. But for him, 
And now it's probably, well, I don't know even know, say if it was a full adversity, a full successful person, complete person, married, four kids, beautiful wife, entrepreneur, motivational speaker. So he got all those two through this circumstance in his life. So again, just let me see if I can get rid of that thing there. I don't know what this is for you. So see, we look at the definition again, it's a little bit is smaller there, but it's the same definition from the other slides, you know. Adversity is a state of hardship, difficulty, or misfortune that one deals in life. Yes, looking at unique circumstances in life, can we see hardship? Yeah, it can be hard, you know. I watched the other videos from him, and he was explaining his life, his daily life is a challenge. As I said, the system is not prepared is not, uh, it was not developed, designed for, for him, not for his circumstance. Me, um, difficulty, again, sometimes, yes, misfortune. I don't see it. Not through his eyes. Yeah, because he doesn't see it. So I cannot see. So that's a perception of that diversity. You know, our perception um, of how adverse the circumstance is makes a lot of difference in our experience through this adversity. It's like, for example, ah, my name is Jackson. I don't think Colin can hear that, but. No, sorry. My name is Colin. I can see. For example, my name is Jackson. J A C H S O N. I love it. I never realized that. See, I never thought about that. I never thought about it. Uh, <laughs> so, so I just said that uh, Jackson's biggest biggest adversity is sitting next to him, Colleen, and I think you know who is sitting next to him. <laughs> All right, so maybe that's also the time to, for me to, to tell a little bit of um, a, a little diversity. Like you said, it's a little diversity. I have some little diversity. I have some big diversity too, but this little one is about the weeds. And I found, oh, that's a perfect experience. I don't want to take much time though. Yes. Uh, so weeds in my garden. I found them my adversity. You know, I want to plant stuff that I want to plant and they come and cover everything. And I have to, and when I have gravels, they come in through gravels and so on. So they are adversities, you know? So I've been, I've been struggling with them. And all the other time I see the weeds in my garden, I see, oh, another adversity, you know? And I have to deal with that. And I'm not happy about them. Um, and that's, that's how I perceive my weeds. Okay, <laughs> that's how I perceive my weeds. Um, and then until I, start, I was researching about food and, and, and herbs and stuff, and I found out, we need to take this. Then I found out, that's fine. And then I found out that some of the weeds I have in my garden are edible. Not only edible, they have um, healing properties, right? So now when I walk to my garden, I see, I see them totally different. I see some of them like food. Oh, food. 
you know, oh, medicine. Yeah. And I go there and I pick them. I still try to control them in some way because really I want some other things planted in some place, but I see totally different. I pick them, I use my salads, you know, I make teas. So it's just changed the whole perception I had about my, the weeds in my, my garden. So how about the weeds in our lives? No? We perceive the weeds in our life as an obstacle to what we want until we perceive them different, isn't it? too much that time okay so that's what i was talking about what is a diversity is a the classic example you know we have half full or half or half empty glass you now someone may see as half full someone is, may see as half empty so that's that's what i was talking about but my weeds now no now my weeds are actually half full now Well, now let's, we, so we talked about what is a diversity, huh? so, but why a diversity? Why there is this, such a thing, in, in, you know, we have, why a diversity? And it comes up again, you know, perceptions. Why we have, I have weeds in my garden? There is a purpose for my weeds, in, in, for the weeds in the world. You now this purpose in the weeds in my garden, and I can use that. Well, we, first we, we have incarnated here in this beautiful planet, fantastic, magnificent planet, our mother earth, um, which herself is a being, no, the planet itself is a being, the planet's transforming, as we know, in spiritism, we play, everything's transforming, evolving, and so the planet is also transforming itself into a beautiful, fantastic, magnificent planet of regeneration, but it's still a planet of expiation in, in its last phases, if we, if we wish, you know. Still, we have some trials at some levels happening in this planet. So we didn't come to Earth with a guarantee of peace, happiness, you know, perfect health. Um, and, and that's what Jesus said in terms of overcome the world, no? So Jesus said, is that what they, that's not the one, but Jesus has a, a saying and it says, I overcame, overcame the world. Okay? So it's less space there. Yeah, I have overcome the world, that's what, yeah. So, that's what, what did he mean? Like if overcome the world, overcome the, you know, the difficulties or the hardship of this world that we all have to do in terms of win, win the, the, the attachments, uh, over the attachments, you know, over our perceptions of, of difficult perceptions of what is wrong and, and, and right, you know, and, um, and that's what he meant, meant there. So that's why we also can understand why we have a diversity, because we have things that we need to overcome. Last lecture, some time ago, it's a long time ago, last lecture, we talked uh, about justice and, and how the divine justice is in everything uh, and always perfect according to the divine plan, plan, isn't it? So the adversity in our lives are also according to the divine plan. It cannot be different because everything is according to the divine plan. And that's a difference. Uh, that is different than saying that all in our experience is pre-programmed, is, is fate, and we don't have a choice. It's not saying that. Uh, we do have free will, and our experiences here on Earth will be tuned, you know, according to the choice we make. Adversities are like teachers showing us that some choices we made in the past were not aligned to the divine plan. Okay. 
Adversities can also show us our potential as in the Einstein um, statement. We were created by God, like God. So God, uh, so like God, we are unstoppable, unstop invincible and perfect in our essence. So I love this sentence from Einstein, adversity introduces a man to himself because we don't know our true power and what we are able or capable until we face an adversity. So again, another purpose of adversity is to show us who we really are. And adversity is then an opportunity in disguise. But how to overcome adversity? Many times we do not have a choice of changing our circumstance, but we always have a choice how we respond to it, right? How we respond to adversity can be different between for, uh, uh, feeling like a victim to our circumstance or overcoming them. Changing the perception is the key. Understanding the role of adversities in our lives help us to look at them at a different way. It may not decrease the physical pain if that's the case. Now, it may not improve our financial um, circumstances, you know, material shortage, maybe we don't, we cannot change that. But it definitely can have an impact on the overall pain by decreasing the emotional pain attached to it. But how to change the, the perception of adversity then, you know? So how can we change it? For everyone who wants to save his life will lose it, but anyone who loses his life for my sake, that man will save it. The, when I read this um, statement from Jesus, I think about surrendering. And now, what is he mean? He meant when he, what did Jesus really meant here was no to lose is to lose our ego, to lose our attachments again, you know, to lose these attachments and become our self, our self, divine self. But to do that, we need to surrender. We need not to want to control. <laughs> so how do we do that? You know, dismissing these stories of our of the mind and connecting to our inner self is the way that I see we can do. Because most of um, our attachments and, and even the perceptions, the wrong perceptions of the circumstances in our lives comes from our mind, from the stories of our mind. And now it's not good to be in this situation. It's not good not have that, uh, you know, resource is not good, not have limbs. And, and that's what Nick said, you know, he can just say, all right, it's, it's, it's terrible. Every day I wake up, every day say how bad, you're gonna think how bad it is not to have arms and legs or not. So this, this is a mind story. And, um, it doesn't mean not to fight, you know, the good fight. It doesn't mean surrender. It doesn't mean, like, okay, I want to sit here and let everything happen to me. I'm sick. I'm not going to treat. I'm not going to, you know, change my lifestyle. Not because it's, no, it's not about that. Um, it's about taking actions. But um, it's not despairing, you know, in this situation. It's about putting a little bit more trust so when we surrender in this way, what do we gain? We gain freedom, freedom from the stories of mind. So I just have two more uh, statements. Um, because Jesus told us uh, so many times, 
to let it go, no, let it go, let it go, into trust in divine plan. So first one, even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me, your road and your staff, they comfort me. And the other one, therefore, do not worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow we worry about itself. Each day has enough trouble of its own, and I love that one. Um, so that's what I mean, you know, about surrendering is, is just trusting, actually, you know, trusting the God, trusting the universe. Oops, yeah, go. And then surrender to win, yeah, that's what we are looking. So gratitude is the best attitude. It is only in this state, in the state of gratitude, that we can be truly grateful. I'm sorry, in the, only in this state that we can be truly grateful. And uh, it is only from this space of gratitude that we can make good choices, create positive things and blessings in, in, in our lives. So if we are in that state where you complain, you are re, uh, re, revolt, rebellious, like um, upset about our circumstances, what can we build, what we can create from that state? Can we improve our circumstances from that state? There's no way you can do it. So first of all, we need to bring ourselves in this state of gratitude to then start with a positive attitude, you know, and, and seeing our, our adversities with a different perspective, that's where we can get the, grat the grat gratitude in. Now, ask me if I'm not grateful for having dandelions, dandelions all over my garden. That thing is a miracle medicine. I just found out, you know, I can eat the flower, just get the flower, eat that raw. It's full of properties. When I look at that thing now, I just first, I always found that a little bit pretty. It was pretty, it was very pretty actually, but it was over and didn't want that. Now I look and I, you know, I'm so grateful for them. It's so great for it changed in overnight. It's about perception. And the same thing is the weeds in our lives. If we can look at the weeds in our lives in a different way, we may be grateful for that. And from that state of gratitude, that one now will change things in my life. So just to finish, I'm gonna finish with another statement from Nick about the gratitude, about being grateful. And he says, often, often people ask how I managed to, to be happy despite having no arms and no legs. The quick answer is that I have a choice. I can be angry about not having limbs or I can be thankful that I have purpose. I chose gratitude. And that's it. That's my message for today. And so, any comments, any questions, calling at home? Thank you. I cannot hear Colleen, I don't know how to do it. I don't know if she wants to talk. Uh, Alex not here. <laughs> Hello, can oh, you yeah. hear me? Yes, yes, yes. yes. It is beautiful to hear that all we need is to release the need to understand, release the need to create a story around everything and to just allow the love of life to shower upon us and to reveal its beauty in its own way and its own time, yes. Thank you, thank you. Thank you, thank you, Colleen. So, yeah, so I think can we move to our prayer? Or, oh, you have a, yeah. You wanna come here? I want yeah, Colleen to. Just, just going back, just going in on that comment I made before, that my name is Jackson with a H, 
when um, until I was 12, I used to write my name spelling with K, just to not find, to not appear that I have a wrong name, until the penny dropped and said, wow, I am unique. I love it. By the way, my email is Jackson at hotmail.com. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> so it's a reason, a reason to laugh, isn't it? It's a, it's a little, it's a little to joke about. So it's a good thing. So it's a good thing. Okay. So um, prepare for our um. Prayer box prayer. Are we, if you have any name in the prayer box, um, we're going to bring that name to to our focus. Otherwise, if you didn't put it, a name in the prayer box, but you think about someone uh, right now, you know about someone that would need or would be and will benefit from, um, from the good healing energy that we can send from here because we are all light workers and, and divine beings. So we are unstoppable and powerful and perfect. And with that, that understanding, we're gonna relax on our chair and breathe in fully with the effect to relax even more and surrender to the moment, be present in this moment and let, let everything go, everything behind that's not, it's not, not doesn't belong to this moment here. So we can make and we can be an instrument of light energy. So we're going to connect to the spiritual team of this house with our inner self, our guides, all the workers, all the friends, brothers and sisters, incarnated, misincarnated. And together we are gonna form this big circle of love. The love is the creative energy. The love is God itself. And for love, nothing is impossible. So with this big circle with love, we're going now to have our intention in place for the people we know, people we know need. Now help, comfort, blessings, people who need to understand or have a different perspective of their circumstances, their adversities in their lives. We're gonna send all this to this energy, through this energy of love, as if it was a light, a light Torch that we just project out, out from this circle to the planet and looking for everyone and finding everyone that needs and is asking for any type of help, comfort. and divine light. 
so we can truly be connected to today. and truly be collected, connected to ourselves. As we give, we receive. So in this circle, we also receive the love, the understanding that we need for our, our journey on the earth. We receive the tools that we need to face and overcome any adversity in our life. So we feel warm in God's love. We feel light. We feel the trust. We feel invigorated. We feel perfect. And more than everything, we feel grateful for the opportunity to be here sharing, sharing this, this giving and receiving. We feel everyone. Sorry, guys. This computer just turned off. We'll see you guys next time. <laughs> yeah, your computer meditated as well. But thank you very much, guys. Thank you. Blessings to all. Thank you, Colleen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Bye-bye. Bye. 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 Bye.